T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another Midheaven podcast episode. This is your special introduction by your special progressed cancer son host and representative of Hermes, the peace dealer. And I'm with your favorite Hades representative and co-host of this podcast. <laughs> oh, the co-host. It's his podcast, yeah. didn't you know? Yes. What the fuck? Oh, yes. Welcome back, guys. Back. I was waiting for you to, like, break into song and dance. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was like, what? That was just how I was feeling. It just, that's just how it came out. Um, so we already did a Pisces season episode. Obviously. Hopefully you guys already watched that. Oh, yes. Um, but... I have severely underestimated Pisces season. Let me tell you how Pisces season We're started for me. Five days in, by the way. Five degrees. The sun goes into Pisces season. I take two edibles and I go to the Brooklyn Bowl to go and watch Coheed and Cambria because they're the fucking shit. You don't know who they are, but they no. sound like Rush. And you probably don't know who Rush no. is either because you're black. That's okay. <laughs> um. <laughs> Let's do our research. Brooklyn Bowl is a great venue. Though. That's all I can say. I'm like, who the fuck is Rush? But yeah. But Coheed and Camry is like this really great, like kind of like pop punk metalcore Rush esque band. And I've been listening to them since I was like fucking 13 years old. And they're one of my favorite bands ever. And I saw a couple months ago that they were actually playing a show at Brooklyn Bowl. So I was like, Fuck yeah, that's an awesome, small, intimate little venue. It's a lot bigger than I thought. But still, whatever, it was sick. And as soon as I, yeah, as soon as Pisces season started, I felt it, like, in my bones. Hmm. Maybe it's because Jupiter's trining my Mars. Maybe it's because it's also, all, everything's trining my Pluto. How do you feel about that Jupiter trine coming on? All I do is, like, want to cry or drink. Like, that's it, like... Or smoke pot. Yeah, I was about to say. Yeah. Smoking weed for sure. Yeah, so it's like super emotional and like I feel like I have to take three showers a day and I'm constantly <laughs> s scrubbing down with salt because I'm just getting slimed. So first day the sun goes into Pisces, I take two edibles, go to the Brooklyn Bowl and I was double fisting beers the entire time that I was there. I don't drink beer. And that's just how life should be. I mean, that's how life should be, but Pisces I'm trying to be yes. responsible. But, like, I realize There's that no Virgo, though. Pisces no Virgo. season is going to have okay. us partying like rock stars. Right? I already have, like, six imaginary girlfriends that I'm banging, like, back to back to back. I'm, like, having my own fantasy like, in my head. But it's my own fantasy. <laughs> All because of the aspects to your, to your, ve to your Venus. Your, I mean, no, your, not your Venus, Mr. your Pluto. But both. Both, yeah, they're opposite. Both, actually, because, so. like, the weird locomotive trans is mm. happening. So this is not about Pisces season, but I had to preface that because this episode is going to be us talking a lot about the um, Jupiter-Neptune conjunction, which whoop, whoop, at first I was like, yeah, I'm so excited. It's like this, like, spiritual kind of baptism shit, and now I'm realizing, like, this feels like it's going to be an emotional spiritual meltdown. And all of the um, boundaries are like dissolving, like limitations dissolving. And so, yeah, so I feel the need to talk about that. And then um, we had an amazing person on one of, our, one of our lives. Thank you, Jessica. Heard me making jokes about eating Cheetos and jerking off and she donated money for Cheetos. So um, this is a big shout out for you, Jessica. Yeah, don't ever say gonna, sad is not the best sign ever. We're gonna eat some food. Fucking Cheetos here. The Cheeto of destiny. And drink booze because that's what Pisces season is about. Making bad decisions, apparently. I have decided that this season I will indulge in every single vice that I have ever picked up for the past 12 years since 2010. Because after, I will release them. Including crack pipes and uh, doing four hours of spiritual dance music. Crack pipe by <laughs> Shout out shout out to the brother right there. Yeah. 
You make, when you want to do something, you make it happen. Look at this. This is disgusting. Okay. Disgustingly amazing. Are you guys getting all the sound effects in there? Talk with my mouth again. Um, I was not joking, by the way. So I'm going to give in to every vice that I've ever had. And this is like the send off. It's like just reminding myself that even though we are in a dimension of matter, nothing matters in my head. But still, it's. It's amazing, five days in, I've disassociated myself from reality. I'm in my own world. It's like every day, but just more Pisces. I'm grateful, I'm having fun. Um, that airy season about to be crazy though. I never knew how well Pinot Grigio paired with Flaming Hot Cheetos. 10 out of 10 would recommend. You're, you're tempting me. Yeah. I'm gonna, you know. You Definitely. Know what? I saw this meme. <laughs> I saw a meme and I'm now 10 times out of 10 sure you sent this to me, but... I send the most fucked up memes ever. They're amazing. So this one was about the booty tickler. Yep, that was me. Yep, it was her, yes! Netflix the butthole like, tickler the finally butthole got caught. The tickler, yeah. Don't the guy that was me. breaking into people's houses and tickling buttholes. That's very, um, Pluto aspects. Netflix, you, you have been tempted. Please make that movie. Mm. Or documentary. I mean, disassociation is such a great topic. It's so heavy. Because it... <laughs> <laughs> but more in the sense of like, you know, when you think about like Pisces energy and just like checking out, kind of like the look on Biden's face where like the lights are on but nobody's home. Like, you, is it, are you disassociating or do you have dementia? Like what's really going on? <laughs> You can say the same thing know. for this Ukrainian <laughs> conflict. Like, what the hell is really going on? Like, there's the headlines and there's what we're being told, but... Well, in the aspects, right? Because, you know, the, the, the Jupiter-Neptune conjunction, it's not actually, I think, going to start until closer to April going into May. But before that happens, Jupiter's going to conjunct the Sun. So on the, the 6th right. and the 7th mm -hmm. of March... The Sun-Jupiter conjunction, you're going to hear all, like, the fucking Starbucks astrologers being like, it's the luckiest day of the year! The same ones that are like, 2-22-2022 is the lucky day Well, for everybody, you. everybody who was doing that was like, oh my god, the numerology. And I was like, yeah, but it's Tuesday. And they were like, yeah, but it's 2 2 2 2 I said, yeah, but it's Tuesday, which means it's Taco Tuesday. <laughs> and it happened to fall on National Margarita Day. So yes. I made a point of every spiritual day. person who's like, I booked with you just because of the numerology today. And there was like eight people. And everybody told me the same thing. I booked with you because of the numerology. And I was like, well, actually, the most important thing is that today is National Margarita Day. And it's also a Taco Tuesday. That's miraculous. And nobody got my humor. I was like, you should miraculous. be grateful that I'm reading and not getting fucked up. <laughs> or doing the reading while fucked up. That I would mean, have been remarkable. You know, I try to keep my Even margarita recycled. to post 5 p.m. hours, but... <laughs> mm. Shout out to y'all. I, I do agree there's collective magic that's created within these grids and matrixes. I also agree it's hilarious that I mean, we, we do this. I was born on 11-11. That was my birthday. 6'11", 11, 11, 11. Oh. Oh, okay. Hey. That's so, I mean, up. you know, I get it. There's magic to it. But what's most concerning for me with these Jupiter-Neptune conjunctions, because there's polarity with, with any, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, any sign or any planetary conjunctions. This only happens about I have one, 180 years or so. Mm -hmm. um, it's really spiritual. It's full of wisdom knowledge, information, but it can also be like the scammiest transits with all of these like fake prophets and psychics. Oh no, that's a- And lots too. of drugs. Um, shout out to Glenn Perry, I, the astro psychology book that I'm reading. He, his son, I believe is in Scorpio, is like a licensed um, fit, uh, psychiatrist that's doing astrology. But in his book, Scorpio, the archetype for them, uh, there's like myriad of archetypes, positive and negative. But he made a point to say, uh, Scorpio, you have like the prostitutes, the criminals, but the evil people, right? Or evil. But then Pisces is the sign that sponsors the fraud. Mm, they like close sign for that, huh? Yeah. Right. In the sense where the scamming, the making up, 
And of course, this isn't, you can take that and look at like Sun and Pisces, Sun and Scorpio is that versus just seeing the vibration of that and how any and any body can like express through that. And I think what you said is so significant. We're literally stepping into a whole new cycle of fraud, scamming. Spiritual fraud. People like updating and changing the game on how they finesse people. And I mean, lots of video editing and manipulation and exactly like, oh, I yeah. did this miracle or I did this right or fake testimonials. So, I mean, remember, especially the most dangerous thing about what we do in this field is it's unregulated. So, like, I have to pass a bar exam to be a lawyer, but I don't have to in order to read a book and instantly become an astrologer. So, you know, there's so much Barnum statements. There's so much fuckery in this field you wouldn't think someone like Candace exists that could read you for filth. And like, actually, you all know how we do. So like, <laughs> that's why it's just really, it's really key, you know, in, in you bringing that up because there's an unsuspecting public who is still looking at what this field is as new. And I'm so glad you mentioned that because I'm terrified of like this new ideology just like surfacing like, oh, yeah, just peace, love and unity, guys. And you don't need astrology because we have this new religious belief and people are just going to eat it. I mean, I'm hoping that it ends up materializing as being a situation that and this is less from the Jupiter Neptune staff. I think it's more going to be from, you know, Saturn and Aquarius and eventually, hopefully Pluto and Aquarius, that there is some kind of regulation. Yeah. for astrology, that it's not seen as something that's being outlawed. But that would be nice to have regulation. So we know that we don't have a bunch of people out there who were or kind of like... Or accreditation and certification, for sure. Well, we do have accreditations. Like, sure. I mean, that's one thing that at least anybody who's prominent that's in the astrological true. community, they're going to put a lot of emphasis on who they studied under, yeah. where they've practiced, what they've learned, what their experience is. But... We're not really seeing the crossover yet. And I think that Pluto and Aquarius is going to bring a lot of that with like psychological studies and astrology. Shout out to um, Changing of the Gods. I don't, did you start watching that? You know what I'm talking about? I've heard it. Okay. Is it like a new documentary? It's like, it's a, like a docu-series that's by, um, well, most of it's like Richard Tarnas, the guy who wrote um, Cosmos and Psyche. That's awesome. Um, Shout but out to him. it's really cool because it's talking about like all of these, at least the first episode, I haven't seen all of it yet. I've only seen one, but talks a lot about like the planetary, outer planetary um, aspects and how it creates like huge revolutionary changes here on Earth. And you talked a lot about the archetypes of Pluto and Uranus and the difference between the conjunction and then the square and the opposition and how that plays out um, in our world. And now that we're coming out of what's been years of, you know, Pluto and Capricorn square Uranus and Aries. Um, now, yeah. now we're coming into some even bigger ones where, you know, Saturn and Uranus have been squaring off and now we're going to see, um, Uranus Jupiter conjunctions here pretty soon. So, um, Holy shit. I liked it a lot so far. I'm a big fan and I think it's really insightful and I learned things that I didn't know. Like a lot of his background stems from, um, trials and things that they were doing with, um, uh, like basically psychedelics and how people were responding in their trips and what they were experiencing and how certain people were having better trips or getting more out of it psychologically or healing more or more receptive during certain planetary alignments. Shout out to y'all. Y'all are the goats. The people who do case studies like that are the goats. Like they're like I have my the deepest respect I have goes out to y'all because that's really our karmic obligation. Like we're the we're the next ones to do the case studies relative to our age group and like right. understanding that. So it's it's just so valuable. To Hopefully, have there's going to be more integration with that, and that we can see that maybe we're moving away from like almost like methamphetamine drugs, like Adderall and other things, and like all of these other prescription medications that. No disrespect to people who need to do it, especially if they find their center of balance with that, but like. Mm -hmm to get back to nature and be finding ways to, you know, be able to possibly microdose and doing it in a safe right. way that's going to actually, instead of, I guess, like getting rid of all of those feelings and just turning us into pharmaceutical zombies, we can actually help people process trauma and heal through that and become more aware and feel more kind of connected cosmically. 
And and that wouldn't even need to and like people could still use pharmaceuticals too. It'd just be more of like an integrated, like you say, understanding of how they all work together or how yeah. they just work. But what do you think about zootropics and smart drugs and like you know? That I mean, kind of I've stuff. been taking. It's been probably the last five years. I've been taking like some kind of like neurotropic coffee what? stimulant. Yeah, and part part of it was just like more just for me being able to like be more checked in and feeling more alert, but also um, I really <coughs> liked like the mood enhancement aspects that it had. And I really have been kind of into like learning more on YouTube about like biohacking and things that people are, right. you know, taking to be able to- Shout out to spiritual bodybuilder. Better kind of supplement their mind and also their spirit. Like I have been a huge, like the last two years, like using, using um, ashwagandha, has been actually mm -hmm, okay. really helpful for me. Yeah, just like mood balancing and nice. just, you know, feeling a little bit more grounded. And um, yeah, I, I'm just, I think I've always kind of been somebody who wants to go more like the natural path in general. Like that's just been my MO. Like, oh, you have a stomach ache, you know, take ginger. Like, oh, you have a migraine, you know, like work with, um, you know, herbal supplements, magnesium, cannabis, and, you know, things like that. I have a prediction. Hmm. So based off what you say, you just inspired this. So like Neptune, sextile Uranus on the North Node, like coming back to reality. Yeah. What do you think about like basically like ecstasy and mushrooms huh. being used more medicinally? I think that, um, yeah, like, for sure. Especially I think of like the North Node in Taurus and just other natural remedies. Taurus being about pleasure. So yeah. I think it's going to be natural remedies for mood enhancement, sexual enhancement, mm -hmm. Um, fertility enhancement, um, arousal, aphrodisiacs, being able to work with roots and herbs, and also um, flowers, right? Because Taurus is Venus, it's about flowers. So something that's been really helpful for me has been like using Bach essences. I've been using Bach essences a lot the last couple of years. Mm. Um, shout out Smart to flowers. shout Let out to um, Desert Rose Alchemy. Um, they don't actually, I'm not sponsored by them. I've never met the woman who runs it, but it's cool because her products are amazing. She's got amazing, um, never ending list of Bach essences. That's basically flowers that have been steeped in alcohol and other things that are used sublingually. But she has a whole um, series that are all planetary ones. So for certain cycles, planetary cycles, Pluto, Uranus, Neptune, Chiron, whatever, it's great. And she can also blend things. And so I've been using those a lot the last couple of years. Um, and aromatherapy. That's awesome. But ecstasy, I think anything that's going to be mood enhancement in general yeah. or be um, gearing us towards being able to have sex more. Yeah. And I also think of like the sextiles between all these planets and Pisces that possibly maybe this season there's going to be lots of trials going on behind right. the scenes. I right? feel that. Yeah. And that they're going to be testing things and doing group tests and seeing how it comes out and... Perhaps it won't actually get to the point where we're seeing like legalization probably right. until Saturn, Saturn has gone through Pisces. there. Yeah, that's true. Um, and shortly after will be the Saturn, you know, Neptune ingress. And part of me questions if drugs in general are going to be legalized and just left up to basically being like, you're making your decision. In a way they will. Right? Yeah. In some places already like that. Yeah. And I wonder the effects that it, that may have on, on crime rates and lowering crime rates. And we think about how much you know, just shit is involved with international exchange and, you know, how many people on both sides are involved in that, both, you know, the criminals, but also like corrupt governments who Which are- Which we won't really know till 17 years later when it opposes. Right. And it comes out socially, so. Right. It's really a lot of unprecedented, like new things. We do. But I think the most important thing you just said right now is the shadow tests or the stuff being tested that is being tested. So like, we don't really know. And, yeah, but I've yeah. seen stuff. I know that these trials are happening. Like you'll see stuff pop up every now and then on social media, and it's weird because I know they've been actually like testing like ketamine and stuff. Um, like a, I think right. it's like a nasal ingestion injection that they're doing. Or they have like the injection where they love like, the same. Oh, like I didn't that. even know. I just know some people can actually take the spray and they can have that the ketamine spray. Yeah, like every so often to like affect. You have to go and I think actually have it. Like you have to go into an office and have it done, but it's supposed right. to like, I think, combat that's depression. Yeah, as could, genius. you know, mushrooms, as could a lot of other things. Mm -hmm. Which are subject to abuse, so yeah, that's I mean, the challenge. But. Everything is, but right. I think at the same time, what's really most significant is just, I'm really excited to see this happening actually in front of Saturn. And I feel like a lot of the testing and, and the 
experience they're going to be having, yeah, okay, you know, I think you're going to see Big Pharma want to get in on it. Are you going to want to see the drug and alcohol and tobacco companies get in on more on cannabis, more on legalized drugs for sure? But I'm hoping that they're bringing in that Jupiter aspect, which right. is, are they actually bringing in people who are from South America and talking to them about their expertise about, and the spiritual connection? Right. Are they getting that insight, not just what the therapist or the psycho, the psych, psychologist or the chemist has to say, but um, are they actually bringing in, you know, people who have that spiritual and cultural connection and the tradition and intertwining that? And that's the spirit. That's where, like, the spirit really comes in. You and know? I just don't see that happening because it's just such a clash. Like, I don't think at that level to commercialize or industrialize it, they will even find a merit or care for that outside of what well, they I, can just do. I can imagine even now, right? Just like knowing some of the people that I know, like within, you know, like the, the ceremony kind of groups and like that whole group of people. I mean, you've got a lot of people who are really against making this mainstream. Right, you know? exactly, right. Going right, right. and taking ayahuasca or doing a peyote trip or sitting for a cacao ceremony or, you know, doing the, the what is it? The, I think it's like buffalo, the toad venom. Buffalo, oh, a uh, combo. Combo. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, it's not something that you just do when you party on the weekend and then go and watch, you know, or attend a festival. Like yeah, that's yeah, not, right. it's not. Mm -hmm. You know? When I first heard about ayahuasca, I thought it was like some super psychedelic. Did you do it? I've done ayahuasca, I've done combo, I've okay. done peyote. And like every one of those experiences kind of matured my view on psychedelics as like medicine. And like. Did you, you know, do San Pedro? No, just peyote. If I didn't do San Pedro. Isn't San Pedro and mescaline the same thing? Or is that peyote and mescaline? Oh, like if it's if it is, then I did, but in a sweat lodge. Mm. And then like each experience, I felt like I was gonna die because I was. One of but my I friends, died. I mean, one of my really good friends Not who ayahuasca, who yeah. got me involved in ayahuasca because I've sat in ayahuasca probably about at least a dozen times. Mm, nice. It's been at least that, yeah. I mean, now it's like for a while, it was like I was doing it really consistently, like working through some issues and some issues with addiction, actually, and drinking. That's what's up. Um, but after coming out of it, I was like sober for a year, which was really great. And it really helped me. But one of my good friends who introduced me to that and I did all the ceremonies, the one thing I never did was combo. Oh, my God. And part of it's because the experience that she had was so visceral that it really scared the absolute shit out of me. The for combo, right? Yeah. So, like, you know, they'll kind of slice you open and then they put the, put like the, the venom stuff, in there right? and then you have like a really intense trip very quickly it lasts like what five minutes five to 15 yeah she loses her mind freaks out pukes everywhere starts mm -hmm. covering it up in the sand like a cat and i remember hearing this who story who facilitated for her she just did it by herself no she did it with somebody i know who it is but Didn't i'm not, I'm not gonna call him out no but she ended Damn. up puking everywhere she did it on the beach um, oh my god and that was enough for me to be like mm, that's a little too much for me but i mean the first time i ever did ayahuasca i remember afterwards being like this was such a profound experience my experience was so beautiful and i went into it expecting one thing and when i got into it it was like no we're gonna go and deal with this right and it wasn't scary and it wasn't frightening i had like happy tears the whole time and i that's came amazing. out of it the next day and was like that was like 20 years of therapy in one right. night yeah, and yeah. I was like, everything's gonna be great, and that one trip was like the catalyst for change, which catapulted me into like a whole year of doing these ceremonies and clearing out a lot of garbage. Which is expressly Neptunian. My experience with ayahuasca was, um, I didn't. I mean, like, I had purgative experiences, but I never did the diet really. I didn't oh, really so you have you have to do that. Yeah. So like, it, it wasn't. It didn't really hit me. Like I felt like I was just holding space for people purging. Like I, the only purging I do is like number two, really. But like, I'd still feel cleansed. But it's way different if you do like the diet beforehand. For me, I'm like, hardcore. Like, like the whole week prior, like I won't eat meat. I won't right. eat dairy. I won't it's drink. I won't smoke. I won't smoke cannabis. Like nothing. Like and they I'm even like say smoking weed like the thirty minutes before. Oh yeah, like, they even say like to be celibate. And I feel like the experiences that I've had that were most profound were. 
me really following like the regimen prior. You have to. Yeah. You have to really. really and when they tell you, oh, do you want a second cup? And you're like, no, I'm okay. If you're able to consciously make that decision, you definitely need another cup. cup. But at that point, you're like so far down the rabbit hole for about six hours that you just like come up for air. It's it's very Neptune. It it comes in waves. If you've experienced it, you know what we're talking about. But shout out to Spiritual Bodybuilder. So he was my combo uh, uh, facilitator. Okay. And like, the first time I didn't know what to expect like I felt like I was fighting for my life like I didn't I didn't feel I didn't feel like I was worried I didn't feel like I was gonna die or like I had to like worry for my Mm -hmm. life but I felt like I was dying did you do it while Pluto was on your moon it was a not exactly but it was around when Pluto was starting to come on my moon and so like it's a super per I even did I even did combo before a DMT ceremony and like wow. the combo, I didn't even feel the DMT. The combo was really it, cause like it forces you to purge, but like at a soul level. So mm. like you'll throw up, but it's not super. It's like you're feeling these old emotions and like all sorts of just like old toxins excrete for you while you feel like you're dying. Like it's 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 it's, 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 it's nothing that I would willingly do, cause it forces you to take a mature. But I recommend it at least once, cause. It, you get it. You get a fearlessness from it after. That's pretty cool. But you have to write. You have to have the right person facilitate it because Some of the, like, they'll the, play music around. And yeah, the help. Icaros to right. like move the have energy. Have a bowl in front of you. Yeah, yeah. Do some body massage because it it could having someone facilitate it really makes it oh yeah you have to especially yeah. if you have somebody i mean the, one of the most amazing because I got to sit with two separate groups but one in particular was through somebody that I know named Kent who was actually bringing um, a, like a shaman up from South America and all the proceeds were going to him building schools and huts and giving clean water and food. So I was like all about that. Um, but he was really great because he had a variation of different vines because yeah. there's different vines that you can work with. And yeah, he would come, he would blow smoke on you wow. and spit the Florida water and shake everything off of you energetically and he could see stuff and like I just feel like I had the most visual experiences with that and the music is crazy because it's supposed to help facilitate the purging and you can purge in different ways you can cry you can throw up you can you know pass it you can also be yawning a lot Mm -hmm, there's all kinds of weird reactions that you'll have to like purging but I don't know it was like such a cool time in my life and it was also in the midst of like me going through like Saturn, Pluto transits and um, Pluto, Venus transits. It's when a lot of that stuff started and it really helped me. It kind of got, it kind of cleaned my clock. To answer your question, like while Pluto was going through Cap, Mm -hmm. the only people who, the only one who really plugged me into these experiences was a Capricorn. So Pluto Mm -hmm. kind of played through him and other Caps to kind of like facilitate that. Very Saturn. Yeah. Very Saturn. Yeah. It'd be interesting. I feel like the narrative on psychedelics, re- religious and spiritual experiences is changing completely this Pisces season well, with that conjunction. And on the flip side, you're also going to see people who are going to be fucking crazy drinking the Kool-Aid, pun intended. Crazier. Mm-hmm. Who are like, I mean, look at the sextiles to Pluto, right? As Jupiter and the sun and Neptune all come into conjunction and then Jupiter gets closer to Neptune and is still sextiling Pluto. I feel like in the next year, we're definitely going to see a really significant cult emerge. I feel that so strongly. Yeah. I feel it. It's like, like some Heaven's Gate shit. Right. It, but not yeah. like a not like a fly by night. What, I'm so glad you said yeah. this because like I felt like it was like we just got over Christianity and Islam and this world religion. I feel no. like this is a new cult. That's there is taken something over brewing for a while. And I think it's going to. It's not going to be like a, a, a here today, gone tomorrow type cult. Too. No, it's going to. And it's probably going to masquerade as something that's very spiritual. It's going to masquerade as law of attraction kind of thing. Yeah. Like you create the world you want and blah, blah, blah. It's, it's going to look spiritual as hell. And it's going to yeah. be mainstream and easy for people to come into. But it's bullshit. No skill. Well, and I would say be careful because it's starting now because Jupiter can be about preachers and teachers and sages and saints, especially like, and I'm not saying this to like scare people because like I said, there's two sides of Mm -hmm. the energy, Mm -hmm. but you can really see a rise in some kind of like magical, metaphysical, manifesting type group that's doing some really dark and sinister stuff. 
And um, I only say this because of the sextiles to Pluto. And the efficacy will fool people because they'll tell you half truths and things that work. Right. But it's just so much hand wavy bullshit behind it that I'm so glad you said that because I'm I'm really worried about that. Like the way it'll just kind of come over with some kind of TikTok fanaticism well, or and Instagram. If, and you know what? That's a good point. So we've got the Sun Neptune conjunction on the twelfth, but then Jupiter doesn't conjunct Neptune until it gets really tight here around the end of March. But it looks like it's going to conjunct at 23 degrees. So is it an astrology cult? Ooh. Um, is I, it a cult following in general? I felt like, I think there will be an astrology cult, but I felt like the cult is something that's going to be like, you don't need astrology. You don't need all the, like basically things that require skill and intellect, you don't need to do that. And so it'll kind of delegitimize people who really do work uh, versus just believing in shit which is just expressly Piscean, but I can see astrology versions of that where you have a lot of the pseudoscientific astrologers just making up more bullshit that's accepted by mainstream. I think there's going to be a lot more of that. What about the trine to the south node when the conjunction is happening? Wow. What do you make of that? That's, that's fucking wild. That is wild, yeah. That is wild, especially looking at April 9th. The moon moves into... Um, into cancer it's trining the jupiter neptune and it's also trining holy grand water trine super feels and super feelings oh my god moon and its dignity that looks to me like a recycled philosophy being repurposed or is it going to be like people channeling and bringing in atlantean and palladian or what's the other one uh lumerian, lumerian yeah. yeah i believe that. right i'll save it for later <laughs> I can I can see that because you did say there's polarity, so I think it's also in a good way. And it's sextiling it's sextiling the north node. Twenty three. And it's trining the south node. What the fuck is happening? The moon's gonna be opposite my moon too. I'll be feeling it. That'll be interesting. But I mean, that's the Jupiter Neptune conjunction too. So I mean, I think it's gonna be great for technological rollouts. And new video game consoles or systems. I think people are going to totally lose their mind in, in uh, fictional realities, in artificial realities. They're going to the get sucked even more and, to screens yeah. and used to being in screens. At this point now, also, we've got <laughs> Venus that's in Pisces. Mars will follow soon. And we've got Sun and Mercury in Aries. So there's something that's kind of like dissolving. Like, you know, if you take salt and you put salt into water, like if you're making a bath or if you're cooking and you see it dissolve, there's something that's gonna quickly dissolve is kind of the feeling that I'm getting in April. And it might be something that's more like emotional dissolving. It can also be really great for like psychic visions, intuition. I could see this as being like clearing. I think baptism is gonna be like a new thing. Yeah. Right? It's also a great day to get baptized. I think- <laughs> It being uh, come and then we'll, we'll do baptisms. The hey, Midheaven podcast Mid baptisms. baptisms. I love that. We'll baptize you in fucking MGD. Amen. Ah, yo, it, bring me your babies. I, I'll baptize them in beer and Cheetos. A Cheeto dove will just land on him. <laughs> I feel like Neptune being twelfth house to the sun is what's gonna make it hidden, shady as hell. Right. Supernatural. So almost like there's something setting up there. Mm -hmm that you don't really find out about. Right. Maybe it starts as a dream, maybe it's a reading, maybe it's an intuition, something you see in a vision, something that you see on a screen. But I'm more curious when Mars and Venus, because Venus loves being in Pisces and Mars is like driving with the brakes on so you don't know where the fuck you're going. <laughs> Um, so this will be great because everybody's definitely going to be in their fields. And Venus is getting far held away from Mars and Pisces. Yeah, she's like, peace out. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, when Venus is in between Neptune and Mars, I could see Neptune as being like the dreams and like getting lost in like the romance of everything. And then Mars shows up and I'm wondering what happens when Mars crosses with these same degrees, so like 23 to 24, then it's gonna be like, boom, like the fantasy's over and you're immediately projected back into reality because look at the sextile to the North Node. Right. 
So, Which you know, the party's right? going to kind of like record scratch. Er, er, <laughs> er, er. Last call. <laughs> Last call for alcohol. Yeah, literally. I mean, I mean, maybe. Mm-hmm. Is that going to be a war on alcohol, a war on drugs, a war on spirituality? Or is it going to be cyber wars, screen wars? Are we watching war, you know, on TV? I think we might see socially and collectively a climax of pseudo-spirituality coming to a head culturally where people start to war against it. Uh, But it's just going to be very misleading. I mean, understandably, to an extent. Right. Right? Because you've got a lot of bullshit people out there trying to do it. Mm -hmm. Which I understand. I get it. I understand. Mm -hmm. But by the same token, it's like... What if this is the cosmic clearing that's going to really wipe people out? Wash them away. Wash them away Mm -hmm. so we can get back to basics? I love that. That's literally it. She just nailed it, y'all. How are people going to, like, and that's what I keep thinking about is, like, my mind is always, like, three steps ahead. Like, that north node Uranus conjunction Mm -hmm. in the summer, July going into August, are all of these TikTok astrologers and all of these other people who are like, yeah, I do this for a living. Like, how are you going to function when you have to go underground? How are you going to function without the, you know, dopamine hits you're getting from all of the likes? How are you going to function when you're not getting comments? Like, are you going to be willing to go out there and actually do it in person and be meeting with people in person? Because as we film this now at the end of February... I can tell you right now, May, June are going to be very, very different circumstances in the world. And I think it's going to be harder for some of this information to get out there. It's also going to be harder to share some of this. So I think we're really going to see what the spiritual community in general is really made of. Yeah, especially with a brutal onslaught to another, like, re... It's it's going to be a brutal onslaught with its, like, how do you say it... Um, with how the mainstream talks about it, addresses it. I'm kind of hoping that, like, and this sounds shitty, so don't take it the wrong way. Mm-hmm. It's not that I want this to happen, because I don't, because right. it affects me and it affects millions of other people who need this information, because the more that we're sharing, the more that we're educating, the more that we're connecting to people and helping people, the higher vibrations will rise, and the right. more likely we are to ascend, because that's basically why we're here. But... If there is this war on spirituality and all this stuff that starts happening and we do see a couple rotten apples that are starting cults or people who are scamming people or the scams become so bad that they start shutting stuff down, part of me is like, okay, let it not be popular anymore. Like, let the next fad come in. Like, if it's not going to be tarot and astrology, I'm calling, like, all the human design people, please take over. (laughs) Or, like, something else. There's a new modality that's going to come about. There's a new modality. And see, that's the thing. Like, with this new modality... There's going to be the temptation to be like, you don't need astrology because we have this new modality. Right. And that's where it's like, there's so much skill and technique behind it. You can't just dismiss it like that. So I I feel like we are going to see, like true astrology has never been trending though. So like, I, I think we are going to see a new fad come through and, and die it down. But what I think we're also going to see are, you know, pieces done on actual frauds like there's so much information quantified there's so much research done moving Mm, forward mm -hmm. right so you're gonna see people profiled who are called out like these people scammed these people jail time exactly and what's gonna happen is for those people who haven't been pieces of shit and are actually legit indirectly that is ethos for you like it's it's gonna it's like you made it through the test of time and like the fact that people won't have any content on you to expose because you didn't out you're not out here moving shiesty you know that in and of itself is going to be even pieces where you get your flowers too like we may see a lot of that so a lot of the narrative from the younger generation kind of pushing that forward if there's an onslaught it's because of a popularization that society fights back towards and i think that's going to be the new narrative Moving forward, how do we integrate this into the mainstream? How do we regulate? How do we make sense of this? And it's going to be a shit show, but it has to be a shit show before we step into the renaissance. I think there's going to be a lot of money to be made looking at the so Jupiter, much. Neptune sextile to Pluto. Yeah. That they're, they're going to, I think, I think the U.S. government is going to realize that there's a lot that they can tax if there is licenses and regulation exactly. that might come. I can also. In this town, you can get a psychic arts license, business license. So. Really? Mm-hmm. When I first moved here, that was how I was working at a psychic shop, and I couldn't officially read until I had 
uh, Clark County business license wow. under the psychic arts industry. So there's huh. there's a little bit. It's not too astrology falls in there, mm -hmm. but like it's still not developed. So right. they, there's still potential to develop it more. Right. And, and then NAICS system and like get the yeah. industry codes up. And this is that next frontier. Well, and I like how it goes from 23 to 24 degrees. Mm -hmm. That's interesting mm -hmm. to me because yeah. it's super Piscean. But what freaks me out is I think that people really need to use discernment, okay? With what you see on television, what For you see real. on screens, what For you see in photos. Real. We are going to see more artificial augmentation, people being able to go in and create literal videos of leaders and all kinds of people. And it's going to be really hard to speak, like be able to find stuff that's fake. You saw the Will Smith video, right? No. You didn't see that? No, what is it? So it's a video of him at the beach. Mm -hmm. And then it's a video of him green screen at the beach. Mm -hmm. And him saying like, no, no, this is real. Basically how they kind of, did you see that one? Yeah, it was lit. It was, it was basically like a blue screen mm -hmm. and how even the, the age of his face was doctored and how they have, and that was a 2019 he made that. Mm -hmm. So like they have the technology for it, but it's so important. It, it like people can doctor anything audio video internet really can't be our only source ever but mm -hmm. like it's gonna be i mean we have so many years of technological development you lead forward with that level of deception and because seconds are crucial the virality of such a clip can influence so many people within moments by the time they exercise a sermon it's too late so you need to have discernment well, in the day, like looking at specifically, that's not the day that Jupiter makes exact conjunction. I think it'll be the day prior. Yeah, actually a couple days prior. But if we look right when it moves to 24, both of them are going to move at the same time, 23 to 24 on the 13th of April. Yeah. Then within a couple days, look at this day, uh, full moon in Libra at 25, 26 degrees, wow. square Pluto. And Mars is in Pisces. So that Mars, Venus, Neptune, Jupiter, all behind the sun and Aries. See, what people don't realize is that the new reality for the world, it's not going to show up until we get to about mm, the second half of May, beginning of June. I really believe that. That eclipse is going to anchor it. Yeah. And, and then, just, yeah. just to reiterate what you said, I think it's the most important thing you said this whole show and just want to harp on how true that is this is a collective wash it's like a tsunami wave and we're going back to basics that's the revolution of the individual back to basics it's like getting ready to build a whole new society yeah. coming into like 10 17 years from now post saturn uranus so we're getting ready for a huge wash up there's literally the sixth mass extinction event that has occurred there's going to be more of that. And I think this is going to be that push to the next wave. This is global control. stuff, though. Global. global. Exactly. I mean, you got Pluto at 28 global. degrees cap, Saturn at 24 oh degrees Aquarius, Mars and Neptune at 24 degrees of Pisces. This is the getting to the end of the Zodiac. This is when we start seeing yeah. massive global changes and endings. And I guess one thing we didn't this touch on. Social media. But the Jupiter-Neptune conjunction is very spiritual. It is. Mm. I think the whole point is, is learning that vibration affects us, um, spiritual healing, past life, uh, memories can come up, really strong ways of emotion. And with the sextiles to Pluto, I feel like you're going to experience like purge situations. Yeah. And so this is something I was talking to my mentor about earlier today that I, I have felt that's coming is the purge. You can give in to the Jupiter Neptune kind of loss of boundaries and like kind of unbalanced equilibrium and like drinking and partying and smoking or you can take a step a, a side step from that and i would recommend doing that around the pisces new moon um by the time you guys are watching that i think this has already happened but you're still within that lunar cycle um to really cleanse whether that's doing spiritual baths whether that's doing sound baths whether that's going sober not drinking not smoking i mean for me i have found that just the Jupiter energy is so hard to manage that for me, it's just one extreme or the other that it's yeah. like, I'm letting myself live my best life up until the second of March. And then 
you know, it's like I'm getting more into the routine of like doing my yoga, um, clearing my space out energetically with music, with sound, binaural beats. Like I'm actually wearing, I have like a band that I'm wearing, the Apollo device that is for your nervous system mm. and it vibrates. So you can like wear it and it like helps calm anxiety and like nerves because I found okay. that I've just been overwhelmed with all the water trines. Right, right, right. That's a lot of So don't give your Neptune away. Be present for this because this conjunction is only going to happen one time in our lifetime. We are not going to see both Jupiter and um, Neptune in the same conjunction again in our lives. It's a moment for spiritual upgrade. Unless you're a vampire. Right. Yeah. Which I am. Shout out to the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> but also I think it's so great because it's going to allow us to realize that while we're separate, we're really not separate. And yeah, I think mass that meditations I love that. That's so true. are going to be a thing. Yeah. And when I think of Pisces, I think of the willingness to go and um, let it all wash away or focusing on our dreams or intuition or meditation mm. um, and the willingness to kind of be alone and some of the introspection that we get from that. I think a lot of people across the world wouldn't have had some of the growth that they've had spiritually over the last two years had they not been put in a situation where they literally had to stay in their homes. And mm -hmm. it's ironic that, you know, you know, political figures or the government or whatever, they, they have orchestrated situation a situation where we have been in this. But I feel like even though from physical perspective, we're very separate, mm -hmm. from a spiritual perspective, we're really not. Yeah. And that's what we're learning is that we're not actually separate. Separation is an illusion. Yep. Mm -hmm. And we need that we need that time to reflect and tune in, you well, know? We want to look at 96, 2009 and 2022 because those are the last Jupiter Neptunes and we're seeing a conclusion of everything sparked 96 too. It's everything is literally coming together and it's in order to wash everything away, take that understanding, go back to the basics. Um, don't sleep on 96 too, because that Jupiter Neptune in Cap is going to manifest that sextile. So it'd be nice to see a lot of their abilities pop in. But that if we look at those respective waves where right. coming out of 2009, the zeitgeist knowledge came through, we're concluding all of those theories, knowledge, understandings connectivity right. to where we experience it and so it's all going to make sense we're literally on the verge of a new paradigm so i think that's a great way to end this episode please join level three two <laughs> one if you value yourself and you just want to be cool if you want to be accepted for real by side <laughs> you're pressuring be, people into joining a membership you can tell people i am a member of the midheaven podcast and i don't know why you're not and you will instantly just be respected in the world and they'll be like, wow, like you're prestigious, like you're level three. Are like, we starting a cult right now? What's going on? Never that. <laughs> this is just. <laughs> Shh. This is Stay just... tuned for our special drinks coming soon. Hey, they'll take you to heaven. <laughs> <That's Fuck. heavenly. laughs> Thank you guys Boy. so much for watching and for your support. Let us know where is the conjunction happening in Pisces in your chart? What are you hey. excited to see? How is it manifesting for you? And uh, yeah, we'll see all of you guys very soon. Take care. Peace.